Well, on the phone line this morning, I'm happy to talk with State Senator Tim Sheldon. Good morning, Tim. Jeff, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Great, great. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we're doing well down here at the old radio ranch. You guys have been really busy. Both you in the Senate and your counterparts in the House have been just voting on all sorts of things. Uh, we run a lot of bills, I'll tell you. Uh, wow. You know, very few survive, but we run a lot of them. <laughs> Some of the ones that passed out of the Senate uh, recently is, uh, let's talk about the Senate Bill 5280, uh, threatening, uh, making threats against police, uh, adding that to the hate crime statutes. Is that kind of what I'm getting a sense of here? Yeah. Yeah, that passed last night. That was uh, uh, not really controversial. It got a lot of votes, and of course, and, uh, you know, there's been a, uh, so many instances lately of people that are uh, uh, basically attacking someone because they're wearing a uniform. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, we had four officers, one former Shelton officer that was slain in Lakewood. And uh, uh, I think it's a it's a good bill. We'll see what happens in the House with it. Um, I, I, I It's just terrible that we have to have a bill like this. But uh, as we see it go across the country, that it, this is a very uh, uh, a time of a lot of unrest and yeah. a lot of fear that the, that the officers have. And I, I think part of this bill is to make sure the officers know that we support them. Sure. We support them. They they put their life on the line every day for us, and it's important that they receive protections. If it became a law and it was added to the hate crime statutes, what would that mean to someone who uh, is accused and then adjudicated of this? You know, I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I, I don't know exactly the details, but I think it would be a, a harsher penalties. Okay. The other yeah. one uh, that passed, again, uh, pretty bipartisan here, is ending sexual assault protection orders. Now, if I'm reading this right, every two years, people who have these protection orders in place, they have to come back, they have to relitigate this whole thing, and it's very hard, uh, from what I'm reading what I'm assuming, is that it's very hard for folks to move on. Uh, and yeah. not, they don't. nobody always, obviously, moves on from uh, being a victim of sexual assault, but, but trying to continue on with their life. Right, and then this this is going to help those people put their put it together for themselves, and and uh, uh, instead of coming back and, and uh, facing their accuser over and over, so it's a it was well supported in the Senate, and I think the bill will pass in the House as well. What other things have you been uh, looking at and hearing about as we move? Uh, we've got some deadlines coming up, and we're yeah. reaching the halfway point. Well, we had a big bill last night. You know, the last bill of the of the day of the of the first part of the session is always a one that is called a special order, and that that bill dealt with uh, school funding. So we uh, passed a bill last night that uh, uh, there's this term levy cliff, and what it is is the back in 2010 the legislature allowed the uh, local school districts to uh, have a couple more years of of uh, uh, levy funding before the the McCleary decision will be um, resolved, and of course, it's taken longer to resolve that. So, we did extend those local levies last night, but um, over um, some objections, although the bill passed with only one uh, no vote, so it was negotiated quite well. And in the bill, the schools get their uh, ability to raise a little more local money for another year and a half, I think, uh, year and a half to two years, but also. Instead of bringing all the money in from local levies and from state funds into one pot, they have to bring it into two different pots. In other words, you can't uh, separate the money before. You can't tell how much the schools are using of state money for basic education or local levies. So this accounting change is going to provide more accountability for uh Students, parents, teachers, everybody involved in schools, we're going to tell where the money is going. So now the next step is to uh, fix the funding. And, of course, we have a, a proposal in the Senate that allows $12,500 of state money to go to each and every student. And then there will be additional money for the special needs kids and, uh, and those other programs that we have. So it's a much simpler way to... Uh, uh, account for and to uh, um, allocate state funding for schools. And uh, I think it's going to work. We did get the bill passed last night. Um, it's been probably one that uh, everyone says we got to get done, but 
how do we do it and how do we put reforms in it so we're moving forward and not just having the same problems we've had for years and years. Yeah. Uh, how are things sounding there to come up with the decisions for the McCleary decision? Well, I think we've got to do it this year. Um, this is day 60, or 61. It's a 105-day session. So I think it's it's possible. It's very possible. Okay. Uh, I don't I don't think you go you should go into a session saying no we can't do it we maybe we can maybe we can't we need to do it do this and get it completed and uh, uh, we have a three point two billion dollars more to spend this year than we did in the last biennium so that's a that's a heck of a nice increase and uh, we think we can put a funding proposal together that uh, actually lowers taxes for people in our district. I really think it will. Uh, when you look at the local rates and the state funding that's available, we should be paying less and getting more. Um, what's happening in these property-rich districts is they're they're paying less and, and getting a lot more because they have higher valuations. They've got companies like Microsoft and uh, you know Boeing in their district, you name it. That gives them a tremendous advantage over the rural school districts. So we're going to level. We're going to level, level the playing field, and I think people will will uh, be very happy with the result. The move from policy to a little more procedure. Sixty-one days in the Senate. Early on, right as we were beginning to uh, talk about the session, one of the things we talked about was the new lieutenant governor, Cyrus Habib, yes. and. How has how has he uh, how has all that been going? It's got to be fascinating to watch him work. Yes. Well, I had a you know as a president pro tem, I, I interact with him daily. And, yeah. Uh, I had a long conversation with him yesterday. He's such an interesting individual, uh, so accomplished. You know, he he uh, endured cancer when he was eight years old and lost his sight, but he has developed his other senses. He can uh, is an amazing guy. Uh, he asked me, he said, Tim, what am I, what, how can I improve up there? Because he knows I, I can see what's going on. He can't. Yeah. And I said, well, a couple things, Cyrus. I, I would say when the, when the young kids, the pages, come up to do the Pledge of Allegiance, just mention to them, speak slowly, okay? Uh, I think we can make some changes out in the wings so that the, uh, the noise level is down. You know, when, when you're blind, you're, you develop your other senses. And so he's, he's very cognizant of the, or aware of the noise level in the chamber. Uh, he's such a uh, uh, accomplished person. It's, it's just every day I watch the guy operate. And um, uh, he is, uh, he's doing his own thing. He's very uh, astute. The rulings that he makes are very fair. I think people thought, well, this guy's going to be partisan a partisan lieutenant governor. Huh. I would not say that at all. Wow. I have no evidence that he is favoring one side or the other, and um, I couldn't ask for more. I like I like the guy. He's a he's a very young person. He's thirty five years old. Uh, you know, Brad was sixty five, sixty four when he left. So um, it's a big change, but he's bringing technology to the office as well. He, his rulings are on his website the next day or. Later that day, when he makes a ruling on a on a bill, so uh, what, what's not to like about it? That's uh, great. I, yeah, I'm very happy for, happy to see him doing well. That's great. State Senator Tim Sheldon from the 35th here. Always good talking with you. Have a good day and uh, thanks, Jeff. thanks for doing the people's work. All right, get that rain to quit for a oh, while. Oh, jeez, you ain't you ain't kidding.